Merchant Marines. They served a critical role during World War II, shipping troops and equipment around the world. They were often in harm's way and routinely attacked by the enemy, trying to disrupt supply lines. But because they were technically a civilian organization, after the war they received no veterans' benefits. Now more than 60 years later, there's a new effort to recognize Merchant Marines for their service and to compensate them. We uh, went to war first, and we were the last to come home after the war. They had a very, very high death rate. They, they told, called us the Forgotten Heroes. The Merchant Mariners were called the Forgotten Heroes because after serving their country, their country didn't serve them. During World War II, thousands of patriotic men who couldn't qualify for the Navy volunteered for the Merchant Marines, putting themselves in the line of fire. Because there was not a battle front or an invasion in World War II that the Merchant Marine were not there. The Merchant Mariners suffered the highest casualty rate of any service during World War II, with one in 26 killed. But because they volunteered to sail on merchant ships, they were considered civilians and not entitled to the same benefits as military personnel when they came home. We were not classed as veterans. You couldn't get a GI loan. You couldn't go to school. Uh, it was very hard to get a job because they were hiring veterans after the war. And uh, well, we just treated like dirt. Marvin Peralt and his friend Hank Harrison were practically kids when each decided to join the Navy. This was the first ship I was on. Well, I was uh, 16 and a half years old, and I uh, rode my horse in this little town called Woodstock, and I seen a sign by the post office, join the Navy and see the world. Hank made it into the Navy Armed Guard, a special unit that protected merchant marine ships, but Marvin didn't make the cut. I went to enlist in the Navy, and they turned me down. I had a slow heartbeat, so I went in the Merchant Marine. If, if you were warm to the touch and breathing, you could go in the Merchant Marine. Even though the Merchant Marines would accept the willing and the disabled, their assignments were dangerous. Merchant ships were constantly under enemy fire because they carried cargo that was crucial to win the war. They wanted to torpedo those ships because they were supplying all the weapons and guns and trains and imagine, everything you can imagine all over there, overseas, to fight the, fight the war. I had 10,000 tons of uh, mustard gas bombs hauling out to India. If anything had happened, the ship was gone. Merchant Marine Captain Pete Chilamitas wrote a book about his experience. We're halfway between Charleston, South Carolina and Dakar, West Africa, right in the middle of the Atlantic. When the uh, Cape Decision was torpedoed, it was about 5 o'clock in the morning. He survived two torpedo attacks. Sitting in the lifeboat watching your ship sink, and you realize, hey, that was your livelihood, your home. Everything is gone, just like that. It kind of gives you an empty feeling, believe me. When Pete returned from the war, his beloved Kay was waiting for him. And even though he served his country valiantly, he received no benefits. It was wartime, and he wore a uniform. He was fighting for our country. He was a courageous merchant marine. End of the war, when uh, they put out the, the GI Bill for all the uh, service our people. service people, they did not include the people at sale of the Merchant Marine. In 1988, President Ronald Reagan granted veteran status to merchant mariners who served in the war. But for the World War II mariners, it was too little, too late. Several years ago, Washington Senators Patty Murray and Maria Cantwell co-sponsored a bill that offered financial compensation, but it's been stalled in the Senate because of opposition from the VFW, the veterans of foreign wars. 
We contacted Senator Daniel Akaka, the chairman of the Veterans Affairs Committee, about the bill, and his office replied, Senator Akaka has not taken a position for or against the bill. He has not objected to any member bringing the bill up for a vote in the Veterans Affairs Committee. For Marvin Peralt, any money they would receive is secondary to the honor they've been denied. I can live with or without the pension or the recognition, but I do think that they should be recognized. They were a very large part of World War II. It's part of the United States history. We need to give more credit to the Merchant Marine. To document his own Merchant Mariner history, Pete Chelamitas wrote his story, not only for himself, but for his fellow Merchant Mariners. Because I figured uh, I had something to say about the Second World War, and there's no publicity about the Merchant Marine at all. And after many years of marriage... We've been married 67 years. For his wife Kay, this merchant mariner will always be a hero, with stories of the sea and his poetry to keep their love and the memories alive. I've watched the roll of the restless sea that brings me slowly back to thee over the ocean waves. I have known patience. I have lain my head down in your arms, marveled at your wondrous charms, taking my breath away. I have known love. I have known you. According to the American Merchant Marine Veterans Organization, more than 1,500 merchant marine ships were sunk during World War II, resulting in more than 9,000 casualties. A spokesman for the VFW, the group lobbying against the compensation bill, says their opposition is not meant to detract from the valor of the merchant marines, but that many civilian organizations supported the war efforts, such as the Flying Tigers and the Red Cross, and they did not receive special compensation.